It's been in virtually every sci-fi movie and TV show for the last 50 years. Lasers, missiles, torpedoes, and countless others launched from spaceships. And why not? It's the ultimate high ground, giving an incredible advantage. But weapons in space have also been a major point of contention in politics, domestically and internationally. So far, we haven't seen much. No lasers, the famous rods from God, nuclear weapons, not much of anything. But there actually has been one placed in orbit. During the Soviet Union's ALMAZ program, the Salyut 3 space station had a 23mm autocannon on it, the same used on the Tu-22. The plan was to use it in self-defense, defending against any US satellite or spacecraft that tried to approach it. These have major problems in space though. The vibrations and recoil can throw the aircraft out of its orbit, start spinning, and even destroy it. It's Newton's third law. Every action has an equal opposite reaction. This makes most cannons like this unrealistic as a space weapon. But it remains today the only true space weapon ever launched into orbit, at least that we know about. Rockets and missiles were planned next. These do not present as much of a problem for a spacecraft as they are propelled by their own fuel. A later Soviet flight was planned to replace the autocannon with unguided rockets, but the Almaz program was cancelled. The Soviets' next plan was a laser. The spacecraft, called Polyus, actually launched. It would have been the first operational laser weapon in space. However, it failed before reaching orbit. And that was pretty much it. Nothing else. Others were planned, like the Strategic Defense Initiative, better known as Star Wars for example, but they never took off. Again, at least not that we know of. There have been many, many rumors and theories about secret space weapons put into orbit ever since the early days of space exploration. There have been many highly classified launches where we don't know exactly what was being launched. Probably recently, the most famous being Zuma. There's been many classified spy satellites launched, but they normally at least announce who the customer is. For example, the National Reconnaissance Office or the Air Force. But for Zuma, no agency claimed it to be theirs. It didn't even fit anywhere into the numbering scheme used by government agencies, and each agency denied ownership of it. There's been several stories about Russian launches, and what was originally thought just to be space debris began maneuvering, showing that it was anything but. So there very well could be weapons in space that we don't know about. One that a lot of people point to is the X-37. It's a very interesting spacecraft, pretty much just a small, unmanned version of the space shuttle. It's been launched into orbit six times so far, and each time staying there longer than the last, the missions are now lasting multiple years in space. What its mission is, isn't clear. They do say it's just for testing, but most of its payloads, and exactly what it is testing, is classified. Many rumors exist that it could be some sort of weapon. Maybe quickly deploy some sort of weapon from its payload bay, or recover something and return it to Earth. We just don't know exactly what it's doing. These type of things get real close to violating the registration convention, which requires each nation give a general description and function of space objects that it launches. But strangely enough, there is no law against putting weapons in space. There is the Outer Space Treaty, which bans nuclear weapons and, quote, any other kinds of weapons of mass destruction in space, but nothing about conventional weapons. In fact, it doesn't even define what weapons of mass destruction are, creating a gray area in terms of larger weapons as well. For example, the popular rods from God concept. They are basically telephone pole-sized tungsten rods which we dropped from space onto Earth. They wouldn't even need a warhead. The kinetic energy alone would be comparable to that of a nuclear blast. This falls into that gray area. It's not clear, but that undefined weapons of mass destruction leaves a door open to the possibility. The problem that is not often mentioned is that these would be extremely expensive. Tungsten is extremely dense, making the rod easily weigh several tons. The cost of just getting a single one into orbit will be tens, possibly hundreds of millions of dollars. Realistically, you'd want dozens of them spread across several different satellites, and along with the cost of actually building them, and the relatively high cost of tungsten in general makes the idea a very expensive one. But first, this episode's sponsor, Warpath. This game looks real fun. It reminds me of the strategy games that I used to play back in the day. It's a real-time strategy game based in World War II, and they have all the most famous weaponry, guns, tanks, aircraft from the era, along with all the classic battles from the war, things like D-Day, Pearl Harbor, and many more. On top of that, the game has a larger level of freedom than others to explore and play the game your way. Each unit can be individually controlled, which really adds the element of strategy, something that I love. It's not just whoever has been playing the longest or spends the most amount of money wins. You can win simply by outmaneuvering and outsmarting your opponents. Set up traps, flank, and circle, and block your enemies from escape, and win. So go check out the game, give it a try. It's available right now on Android and pre-register on iOS. And if you use my code WARPATH000, no spaces, you'll get 200 gold 
100,000 military expenditure, 100,000 steel, 100,000 crude, and 100,000 army experience to get you started. Again, that's Warpath. But the real interesting one, and the topic of every sci-fi movie and show, are laser weapons. That's what most people probably think of when they talk about space weapons and warfare. This likely will be the future, just as we are seeing laser weapons on Earth slowly, very slowly, become reality. There's a lot of problems that still need to be figured out, such as the massive heat generation, power requirements, stress created, precise optics necessary, and so on. But we will likely see them at some point in the future. But a more realistic role of space weapons in the near future is just kinetic killer satellites. Those that maneuver to match the orbit of an enemy satellite, maybe it's an important communication satellite or a spy satellite, and then shadow it, staying nearby. Then, when the time comes, accelerate and smash into it. It's possible right now that there are many of these satellites in space, shadowing others. We've seen stories in the news recently, and it's been talked about for decades. In fact, the original purpose of that Salyut 3's cannon was to defend against this. It was also part of Tom Clancy's Red Storm Rising, where a killer satellite took out a US KH-11 spy set. These large satellites are extremely expensive and can't be easily replaced. They take years to build and years to launch, and then even then often delayed. If you've ever tried to watch a live stream of a SpaceX launch, you'll know how often this happens. Anyway, losing a few, or even just one, could have a major impact on a nation's ability to wage war. These satellites can maneuver a bit, possibly dodging one of these, but the best way to survive is to have them in large numbers. Instead of a few large, expensive spy or communication satellites, create and launch dozens, even hundreds of smaller cheap ones. A perfect example of this is a company called Planet Labs. They operate over 100 small imaging satellites that provide new imagery of virtually everywhere on Earth every single day. The value of this capability cannot be overstated. Nobody had this ability 20 years ago. Even the best US spy satellites can only cover a relatively small area of the Earth in a single day. It could have taken several days before they finally had a satellite in position to see an area. And even then, the area could be covered in clouds. The resolution of planet satellites aren't anywhere near as good as the large spy satellites, but they're still more than enough to identify basic objects. The safety here relies in numbers. Losing some would have little effect on their overall capability. So the future could rely on numerous, small craft, not the massive spaceships with shields that we see in the movies. Then again, we might get to a point where these won't even be safe in the future. After all, the Strategic Defense Initiative's objective was to destroy hundreds of ICBMs and warheads in space. The only realistic way of doing this would be with lasers and other directed energy weapons. So it still could happen in the future. As new nations begin to design and operate longer range ballistic missiles, like North Korea and Iran, it could help spur another SDI-like program in the near future. And the militarization of space that first started back in the Cold War might finally happen.